ShopRite, Africa's biggest basic food item retailer, was said to be ready to quit Nigeria after 15 years of business activities in Africa's biggest economy. But it was later clarified that the retailer was looking at interest in its Nigerian business investors. Although market analysts familiar with this type of development say any company's exit from an econ economy should be a major cause for concern, more so for a country like Nigeria, which needs foreign direct investment. They stress that the importance in job creation cannot be overemphasized. Uche Waleke, financial economist and professor of capital markets at Nasrallah State University, in a written comment to Business AM said, and I quote, the exit of ShopRite or any other foreign business for that matter ordinarily should be a cause for concern, especially for a country like Nigeria, which is in dire need of foreign direct investment. The importance of foreign direct investment, especially in the area of job creation, cannot be overemphasized, end of quote. And joining us live is Bright Jaja, an entrepreneur, to take a look at all of this conversation. Good to have you, uh, Jaja. Hello, thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, uh, while some are mourning the exit of ShopRite, if you like, others are certain that it will open the door for new investment. In your opinion, which is it? I think uh, there has to be some kind of balance. Uh, um, yes this will open doors for new investment when it comes to the young entrepreneurs who are able to meet some of the demands but at the same time we still need this you know at, at, especially at the point that we're in right now i, I don't think nigeria is ready enough to um have um shop right exit and other companies and i'm sure it's not just shop right there's a lot of other companies who are actually planning to exit because of the um, situation of the country so i don't think we're ready for that yet i mean let's say in the next two three to four years um that, that's possible, but right now I don't think we're ready. Mm -hmm. So what is the right balance to be struck between foreign players in our national industries and indigenous inclusion? Um, it, it, it's, it will be a core investment. First of all, uh, like I always say, and that's been my message for the longest time, um, there are a lot of companies who are willing to come into Nigeria, who are willing to invest in Nigeria, but the key problem is the skills level. Um, I was talking to um, a couple of friends a couple of weeks ago, and the conversation was still the same. Um, we have to start on learning and relearning um, and empowering ourselves with the skills that is in demand within this time. So companies um, from all over the world who are looking at actually investing in Africa are not able to do that because we don't have the, the capacity. So I think the first thing first is um, for Nigeria um, to fix its technical and vocational system, to prepare its young people, to focus its young people on the skills that are actually in demand. And then secondly, um, prepare the infrastructure that would, uh, infrastructure, both physical infrastructure and policies that would encourage investments, um, 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 global investment into the, into the country. Mm -hmm. Bryce, you just hinged on my next question, which is what is the role you know, for innovation amidst, uh, amongst the looming wave of unemployment that the economic recession will bring? Um, innovation, innovation is, is, is a key component of everything that we do at the moment. Um, but still, we're still very backward, especially when it comes to um, internet access and when it comes to the infrastructure for internet access. I mean, I, I was trying to use my my um, Wi-Fi and it wasn't working. I had to connect to my phone for this to happen. So that means if the call comes in right now, it's going to go off. Uh, and that's one of the major things. Without a, a strong infrastructure, innovation is limited. So I think um, for when it comes to the role that innovation plays, it plays a major role. We need to equip the young people with the skills, with the technological skills. And then we also need to um, create, um, invest in infrastructure that supports this innovation and these technologies. Mm -hmm. And having said that, are you beginning to see activities, you know, to suggest that these opportunities amidst the pandemic will be taken advantage of, you know, especially amongst young people? I've, I've seen a lot of things that young people are doing, and most of these things are going to create a lot of jobs. I've seen, um, I mean, especially people from our platform, scalers.ng, we've seen a lot of young people create different technological um, tools and solutions that would actually, you know, create jobs for other young people. So there is a huge opportunity right now uh, because young people are beginning to tap into, you know, the existing problem. But at the same time, there is still a, a need for support a need for support from the government side when it comes to infrastructure, a need for support when it comes to financial support, when it comes to um, investing in some of these ideas to become a reality. Um, I think that's, that's where the balance has to be, where 
you know, you add young people in, in, in the conversation and you, you, you identify these amazing ideas and, and support it with funds. So, so at the end of the day, these young people and their innovations can create job opportunities for, for other young people. Mm -hmm. Right, Jaja. Thank you so very much for your thoughts. And thankfully, no call came into your phone to disrupt our conversation. Do keep safe I'm, out I'm, there. I was looking at the phone the entire time. All right. <laughs> Do keep safe out there. Appreciate it. Right.